Hey guys, welcome to another um, episode of Pincade. It's been a little while since I put out a video. I've been slacking. I had other things going on and stuff. So um, I finally got a little motivated today and I decided let's uh, try and make another video here. Uh, so this video is going to focus on, uh, this is Visual Pinball 9 that we're working with right now. This is actually 991 but this would apply to pretty much anything that's in the, the Visual Pinball 9 family. Uh, basically, there's going to be times that you're going to download tables and maybe you don't like the way the physics work for the flippers or um, maybe the shots don't feel right. I purposely am demonstrating a version of South Park that drove me nuts when I first got my, uh, my virtual pin. Because I am a fan of this table, um, even though it's kind of a basic table and it's kind of a, it's just a fun table. I find it funny. Um, but this uh, version of it actually drove me nuts trying to figure it out. So one of the first things that I do when I download a table is I, um, I give it like a test run. Hello there, children. Now, the, flip, the, the, the physical plunger doesn't work on this, but it's fine. I'm just going to use the bottom plunger. We're not going to get into plungers really too much today. But first thing right off the bat is I don't like how high these flippers go up, right? It actually makes it impossible. I mean, I actually did a post pass, but most of the time it makes it like literally impossible to do post passes on this table. Also, um, you can never do like a flipper pass, like a tap pass. Not that they're that easy to do, but I mean, it, just the way the level that it's raised at is um, just impossible to do that. Aww. The other thing is, okay, people, move along. Um, as you play it, you'll notice that, oh, no, that some shots are impossible. So shots just don't look like they line up correctly. For example, I can't make that chef shot to make my life, to, to save my life, right? But I know in real life, I can, I can backhand that chef shot from the right flipper. I could also hit Come it from, on, we gotta from save the a children. four shot on the, on the left flipper. But from the right flipper right now, Right uh -huh. flipper right now, it's, it's oh, yeah. virtually impossible. Yeah. Every single shot feels like it goes to, to Mr. Hanky um, toilet. All right, I'm literally. Isn't fair, the other thing is, I don't know if you saw how that rolled up the in lane. I, it's just, it does not play right at all. Um, from the left flipper, I also know in real life that I can backhand Kenny. And I also can't do that, and I also can't hit him from the forehand, either. No matter what I do, my shot, um, tends to go... Right towards, um... That lamp, that, uh, what is it, Kyle? Shot? Um, and a lot of times it's, it's going off the flipper and, and hitting Cartman. Oh no, super butt bumpers! And this is this is just frustrating to play when when the shots are literally impossible to make. Um, and this is a combination of a couple things. It's the, it's the, it's the uh, physics of the flippers that are set up. It's the angling of them. Uh, it's the power, the speed, and we're gonna get into all this stuff. And we're gonna try and fix it as best we can. Maybe we can't get everything to to play perfectly, but it it should at least the shots should at least be. Um, Accessible. Right, so I'm just, so quick. I've already seen enough. Um, hopefully, you've seen enough to see that I was not exaggerating. I could not make those shots, and and as we go through, hopefully, I'm not too tired, and I could still make shots correctly. Uh, you'll see the improvement. Um, so, with the table loaded. Uh, by the way, there is a better version of South Park out, but I purposely picked this version because I knew. Uh, it needed a lot of work when I downloaded it. Um, the new version does not need as much work, but you're going to need to know these skills for Visual Pinball 9 regardless. So, 
uh, if you click this box here for options it'll bring up this menu display here and there's a couple of things that I check right off the bat uh, once once I play a game and I get a, an idea of how it's playing I check the dimension and slope right so slope min difficulty and slope max difficulty around six six to seven is usually like the average number I seen use it a lot um, basically what this is is how much of a tilt is on the table and how fast does the ball come back to the flippers when you shoot it up the table uh, that felt kind of uh, accurate it, it didn't feel too fast coming rolling back it did feel fast shooting off the flipper it seemed like the ball was like you couldn't even see it half the time um, but rolling back, it, it felt right. Um, also, if you if you have some ramp shots or something that are um, like maybe the the ball speed comes back at you correctly, but maybe a ramp shot is too easy, but you don't want to turn down the power of the flippers. You might want to set the max difficulty of this a little bit higher, and sometimes that'll make your ramp shots a little bit harder without messing with the flipper physics or how fast the ball is rolling. Um, so that being said, six is, is pretty normal. If you um, click backdrop and you go into physics and graphics, this gravity constant, I don't ever mess with this. And the reason why is that I was told, I, I read somewhere that this is a measurement of, of the, uh, how do I say this, the, the, the inch measurement inside of a table. And depending on how the author built the table and they set this number, it measures like, you know, the distance of everything and, and how the physics should respond to that. So I never changed this number ever, right? Um, because anytime I have changed this number and set it to what the recommended setting is, uh, I've seen the table never play right. Like it never would feel right no matter what adjustments I made to it. The physics would always feel wrong. Um, so don't ever mess with this. I don't mess with most of the settings in here anymore. I used to. I was, it was recommended to change a lot of these things. This scatter angle, however, is the only one that I still mess with. And I make this a 0.5. And what I believe this does is that when it hits something, it makes it refract off you know, in a different direction. So that... It kind of gives the appearance that you know it hit something, it ricocheted off, and it went in a different direction. Um, whether it does that or not, it's been too hard for me to determine. But I just still leave it at 0.5 because it still works um, regardless. So now the next thing is is to actually adjust. Let's. I want to adjust the flippers, right? Now there's two different ways of doing this. And the one way I don't recommend, which is to just click on the play field and hope that you get the flipper, right? Um, this flipper is, if you right click it, it actually shows that it's locked. But not all authors will lock every single object on a table. And if you accidentally, let's say we're just for the first time clicking it and we accidentally click it and do one of those, well, I just moved it, all right? And now it's not an original setting, and good luck trying to get it in the original setting. So I'm going to do a, a Control Z. Hopefully, undo that. Okay, so I undid it to the point where it's still locked, right? So hopefully, it's not uh, changed, uh, altered in any way. The way I recommend, um, click, we're going to click back in the white space so that it says table here. The way I recommend doing it is to click edit. And then you click select element and you just highlight one and type in left, left F. Uh, sometimes it'll pull up the flipper. Sometimes it, uh, it's, it's L flipper. That's why. So, you know, the table author can name it whatever, but most of the time they use left flipper, but in this case it's L flipper. And I'm also going to select what I'm going to assume is going to be R flipper, right? So I'm just going to scroll down. I'm looking for it in the list. You don't want to click on anything because you don't want to deselect the one that you have. All 
there it is. So I'm going to hold the control button. I'm going to hit that one. So now I should have two of these selected, right? So if I scroll up, I have that guy. I have this guy. And if you do select, you'll see flipper too, right? And there's no name here. Because basically what happened is I clicked both flippers. I selected both of them. Because the physics, I'm going to change all in one shot. So I'm going to try and briefly explain what these settings mean. And they may not be to the dictionary uh, definition uh, from a, a developer standpoint. It's just what I kind of know about them. So basically, speed is how fast a flipper pushes a ball. And strength is how fast it hits a ball or how hard the solenoid will will react when you push the button. Elasticity is how bouncy or not bouncy the rubber is on the flipper. Scatter angle, I still don't really know what this means. I think what it means is, um, you know, the closer you get towards the edge of the tip, the more it scatters out. I mean, I guess it's for, for, for orbits or whatever, but I usually always have it at zero. And I'll tell you the only exception that I ever set it to one is for side flippers, like um, like the upper flippers on, on certain play fields that are sideways. That's the only time I set that to one. Um, return strength is is how quickly um, it, it, it goes back to its original state of being down. And that um, makes a difference to... to you know, do post passes or if you're doing like a solid state or an EM, you might want to make it go back slower, you know, to give it that weak solenoid feeling or, or, um, you know, just to give it that old school, like solid state feel to some of the flippers. Um, recoil velocity, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember exactly what that does. Power law is some mystery of how it takes like some of these settings and puts a power to on it to determine, you know, other physics, which is a, a complete fucking mystery to me on what it does. But I, I know that if you set it at two, uh, other settings come out correctly. Um, the next one is oblique correction. And that's how much your shot will go towards the center. So in this case where I could not hit the chef shot, that's like right here from the right flipper. Once you see me set the setting, um, it'll start working. So I had read on a forum, it was a very long forum on, on vpforums.org about the visual pinball nine physics. And there was a lot of different, um, you know, standpoints and, and, and theory behind it. And I took this one guy's settings and I, and I tried it and I don't remember the guy's name off the top of my head, but I tried the setting and it actually turned out to work very, very well. So the setting, um, and I'm going to set them right here. It's for speed. It's 0.25. And for strength, it's 0.5. And for elasticity, I like using 55. Return strength is a 0 0.05. Recall velocity is 0 0.07. Sorry, I got. Uh, I'm reading them off of my cheat sheet here that I saved them because I work on so many different versions of visual pinball right now that I can't remember every single setting. So I'm sorry. This one here, the return strength is 0, 07. The velocity here is 25. And the parallel is 2. And the oblique correction is 4.5. So I'm just going to leave that on the screen so that you could get a, a visual on it. So now that's set up, right? And that's usually my starting point. If a game plays as, like the way this one is, 
that's pretty much where I'm going to start at. I'm just going to wipe all the all the settings they have. And don't be afraid to, to wipe all the settings. I mean, if the worst case comes to worst, you can always um, just go and, and, and reset. You know, re-download the table or make a copy of the table before you start doing this. If you're worried about, you know, destroying the table. Right? It's not, it's not necessarily totally permanent. Um, you could always re-download it or do some safety precautions to not destroy it. Um, so now the next thing I want to do is I click this white space and I have table again. And I'm going to, oops, I'm going to select element and I'm going to do left flipper. Okay. Now the reason why I'm doing um, one at a time is because these these start and end angles are different depending on which flipper you're on and the way they change is different so I don't want to set them both at the same time because one is going to come out correctly and the other one's going to come out really cockeyed so I don't remember which one sends it up and which one sends it down but basically what I'm looking for is this end angle um, to be changed so that this is the start angle right here where my mouse is and this is the end angle and this line is showing you you know where where it'll end up and I, I just don't want it arcing that high I just want to turn it down just a little bit so that it's maybe like right here or something I don't know how well or how easy it is to see that but what you can do here and real quick before I do this VP9 tends to crash sometimes so I'm just going to save it right now because I don't want to have to go back and, and redo all those flipper settings. So this is at 58. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a dramatic change, right? And I'm going to remember that it was at 58 to start with. Um, and I'm going to make this 25. And let's see which way it goes. So it went that way. It went even higher, right? So I know that this number needs to go up in order to make the flipper end state go down if that makes any sense it's i know it sounds like a riddle but if you watch as i change this 65 minute go down right if i if i increment it by tens you're going to see it going down right that looks like it's a little bit too far that looks like the ball will come down roll and go you know right across so we were at 58 originally let's try like 62 65 looked a, a little bit too high so that's 62, right? So the next thing I tend to do is figure out the math here. Of 58, so I raised it by four points. I call them points. So now I'm just going to leave it at, at 62 and four point change, right? Because I'm assuming that this guy did both the flipper, you know, end angles the same, just changing the numbers back and forth uh, position. I'm in the wrong spot. So now if you see the end angle here is a high, very high number all the way out there. So it's, it's 302. So if we take away four, it's 298. And I know that the number going down is correct because the other one, the number going up uh, made it go lower, right? So then the right side, you go down. It, it's a very confusing thing to try and explain, but when you start to mess with it, you'll 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 understand where I'm coming from on it. Um, so let's just give it a play. Let's look at what the flippers look like. Just waiting for the ROM to load here. Okay. So if I start the Come game, there, the, if you notice, the yeah, flippers yeah. don't go as high. Kick the baby. Just by, uh, I did a, a flipper launch, it looks like. Just by a little bit. So now, if but you notice, I... oops. Come on, quit draining those balls so quick. Hey, it's Mr. Hanky. So I still feel like um, they're a little bit too high because the way it rolled down, it, it kind of went to the tip. But it looked like it, it had no chance of ever accidentally going across. Um, 
let's try post pass. So, as you see, the post pass is still problematic. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna try a chef, chef shot. Nope. But as you can see, that the Kenny shot was almost backhandable. Cheesy boobs too? <laughs> so the ball, I feel like I have, I'm a very controlled player and I still don't feel but as you can see if I did a perfect shot you know, I was able to get that chef shot, and I was almost able to get that that uh, that Kenny shot. And what I think the problem is right now is the angles of the flippers. It's not so much I don't think the uh, the oblique correction and, and those other physics. I I really think it might be the angle of the flippers. I'm trying to remember where it, where the original table's flippers really ended, but we're just going to have to wing it. So, L flip again. And then, of course, like I said, you got to do these one at a time. So maybe it was, maybe it should be 65, right? Which raises it by 3. Which means that raises the number, lowers the flipper, if the, you know, back to that confusing, uh, confusing statement, right flipper, so this one's going to go down by three, which makes it 295, and I just want to check one other thing, maybe, Keep forgetting this guy named him L Flip. It's so annoying because I'm used to doing left flipper. I'm just gonna cut the elasticity down. Nah. You know what? No, I changed my mind. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it alone, because I don't want to start doing too many uh, adjustments to physics for you guys. I kind of just want you to see that, um, you know, working with that starting point Hello there, children. And, and going, you know, from there slowly does make a huge difference whoa, 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 whoa. in the gameplay. But I thought that was going to drain. But as you see now, the flipper looks a little bit better. And when I go to flipper pass it, oh, well, that just was bad luck. But I think the slings might be a little bit overpowered. So I'm gonna go for the Kenny shot. Perfect. That shot felt right. Yeah. Chef. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, no. Okay, I missed Super it, but... Ah, those pop bumpers. Alright, we knew that it would work for the fourth ago, flipper, but it, it felt, um... Good. Ah, Jesus, I was trying to use the center post to try and get it oh, back. Yeah. Uh, we know that the chef chef shot was, um... <laughs> accessible from that flip pipe. flipper, but I want to try and uh, Blood pipe. hit it from this guy. Hi guys. And I still don't like um, how hard it deflects off of certain things, but, and there we go.
we go. I can make... So, I can now make the left to right Kenny shot. I can make a cleaner left chef shot. I should not be able to hit the toilet from the left uh, flipper because of that pop bumper that's there. Um, but I can still make it from the right flipper. Try and post pass. And I was able to make the Cartman shot from the tip of that flipper very well. If I make the uh, Kyle shot, I don't remember if it's Stan or Kyle, it's been a long time since I've watched these guys, but that left orbit there, perfect. All right, I'm not, I was not fudging my shots before to make it look like these actually made changes that were legitimate shots before. Um, that was an accidental shot to Kenny. Not Kenny Cartman. Um, I am not gay. Because I actually timed Come my on, shot wrong and it went the off children. the tip of the flipper. I was actually going for the ramp. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Uh -huh. Oh yeah! It's taking a little bit longer, but I want to try and make uh, that that right uh, ramp shot. Because I made pretty much... Oh, uh, there's only one other shot other than that ramp that I want to make. Okay, well, I'm bombing terribly I'm trying to make that shot. It's not the table's fault. It's actually... There we go. Okay, so... Oh no, super fun bumpers! I mean, she, she had a, that, that had enough momentum to come across. And that's what I was looking for before. So now, the other shot, the only shot I have left to try and make is the backhand to Kenny, which I notoriously do on this table in real life. And there it is. This table plays 90 something percent better than it did. Um, what are we doing here? Maybe the flippers need to go down just a, a tad bit more. Maybe the power needs on, to go down just a tad bit more on the strength setting. Just so that um, when I hit something close, it doesn't go you know, crazy fast how it, how it goes sometimes. But other than that, I, I mean, I hopefully, oh, yeah. hopefully you see where I'm coming from, right? I don't want to, uh, you know, when I do these tunings of my tables, I can sometimes spend a week, you know, tur slightly turning knobs to, to get it to play, you know, the way I think it should play or the way I know it plays. Um, another piece of advice is if you're, if you're playing a table that you've never seen in real life and you want to get an idea, you know, go on YouTube and watch some play like um, point of view playing videos or whatever there's tons of them out there so that you can actually see you know um how they how they respond when someone did a, a post pass how did it respond when they when they did a, a, a dead flipper pass or you know what i mean um were they able to make backhand shots you know there there's a hundred different things that you can read off of a uh a, a, a living uh, video of someone playing it and then try and emulate it um, here. One other thing that I do want to go over um, before I cut this video is um, I want to show you how to adjust those uh, those slings and hopefully I'll be able to find these slings. Okay, left I, I usually adjust this one, the left slingshot, and I'm holding control, and there it is, right slingshot. And they're going to come up as walls, because that's really what they are. Um, and we're going to go into state. And it should have a hit event, of course, because we're, we're hitting it. 
And right here, the slingshot force, um, the hit threshold tends to be, you know, how sensitive it is to, to a touch before it triggers its sling motion. Um, and slingshot force is usually how, how fast it throws the ball. Um, these other things are probably zero or blank because there might be a difference in the two. Um, like elasticity for some reason has nothing here. I'm going to assume that the, that the, uh, the two are different, right? And we can prove that in a minute, but for now, I'm just going to, I want to turn this down just a little bit seven, right? Cause it, it almost seems like every time it touches the flipper, first off, I mean, every time it touches the sling, first off, if it, it feels a little bit like it's too sensitive, um, so maybe I'll raise this to like a three. And when it does, it, the sensitivity doesn't necessarily bother me. Um, I've played machines that have very sensitive slings that they're constantly firing off. Sometimes they fire off when there's nothing even there. Like you nudge the table, it fires off. But um, the, what bothers me is the slingshot force where, where it's throwing the ball at like a crazy speed. And I know... Um, it usually doesn't go that fast. I mean, it goes fast, but it, to this this thing is going so fast I can't even see the ball. Um, now, for the elasticity, since this field is empty, I just want to check and see if there is a, a setting there and it's different. And if it is, why is it different? Why does this person think... See, and this one's 44... And this one's 45. So why is one 44 and one's 45? I have no idea, right? Um, I'm going to just set them both to 44. I don't know why one needed to be just a slightly bit bouncier, rubberier, rubber. Uh, that's not really a word, but you know what I mean. Uh, have more rubber than another one. It, it, this is why I use this table as an example. Um, because this table was the bane of my existence when I first got a virtual pin. I, I spent weeks trying to figure out why I couldn't get this table Hello to feel there, right. Hey, Dad. So now I'm just gonna... So a little bit... A little bit less sensitive there. Oh no, super fun bumpers! And now, now that I'm... Uh, Trying to get it to, to trigger off a sling, I can't. So as you see, it threw it, it did throw it a little bit there, but it didn't throw it, you know, like an incredible amount. And, and it's also not as sensitive because I changed it from a point two to a point three. And of course, it had to get the. There we go. So maybe maybe I turned it down just a little bit too much on the power. Maybe it should be like a seven point. Come on, we gotta save the children. Six or seven point seven or whatever it was, because it seems like uh, it's just drawing it right back to the flipper. Maybe it needs a little, uh, just a tad bit faster. But like I said, this is not to, to make a this tutorial is not to make a uh, what that ball just disappeared to. Stuck somewhere out there. I don't know what that was about. Uh, oh, yeah. Sweet. This tutorial was not to make a perfect South Park. It was just to take a very bad playing table and try and make it better and show you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel of getting these things to play a little bit better. Like I said. You could try well, out for perfection, but ago, emulation is emulation. It's never going to be, you know, 100% perfect. But oh, yeah. hopefully this video, uh, you know, taught you a lot about the, the Visual Pinball 9 physics and how to tune some of this stuff. We went a little bit beyond uh, tuning just the, the flipper physics and went a little bit into adjusting other objects on the table like the slingshots um 
if you were doing a side flipper, like I said, the flipper settings would be the same, but that scatter angle one, I'd, I'd put it to one. That helps it um, do a better, you know, straight shot off of the flipper there so that it goes like across the play field, which is what most side flipper shots are for. Um, I, real quick, I can show you. Uh, I don't want to save this because I'm not even going to play that table. Um, a Twilight Zone really quick. I believe I tuned this guy. And I'm just going to select the, uh, the left flipper. I'm not going to go looking for the other one. Um, sorry, we're doing the upper flippers. Hold on. A little bit tired. It's, it's, you know, it's late. I've been working all day. Trying to figure out what they call this uh, left mini flipper, maybe. Yeah, it's the little guy up here. The one that shoots into the piano. Um, as you can see, here's those settings, right? 25, 5, 55, 07, 25, 245, and this guy's a 1. And that, like I said, that, that's going to give you the shot that's going to go, you know, from, from like around here on the flipper, poof, right, right there into the, uh, into the piano. Without that one, it, it kind of like shoots the, the ball more down towards the slot machine. Um, and with this setting, it's, it shoots it right pretty much. I mean, if you time it right, it shoots it right into the, um, into the piano and it feels like I'm playing the real table. I mean, that Twilight Zone plays awesome. Um, I took a lot of time, you know, tuning that one. So I'm going to get rid of this terrible playing, uh, South Park. And this is the new one, uh, which you can get off VP universe, which is not required at much tweaking. I did a little bit of tweaking to it. Um, but from what I remember, uh, the the table played fairly well. We can take a look very quickly. I know I keep saying we're going to end this video, but I'm trying to give you guys as much uh, information as I possibly can in one video. If we look at the flipper setting here, and we're only going to look at one, like I said, um, this is pretty much my settings that I always use. Um, I don't know if that was the original settings, but I set it to that and I didn't really need to uh, do much more than that position wise um, that's interesting this guy oh this guy went to the negatives okay it doesn't really matter if you start at the positives or at the negatives it, it's just the preference of the table author if this thing goes you know if you go up in this number it probably uh, brings you closer to zero but at the same time it you know changes the flipper just just keep in mind what you start at and then turn it up a little bit see which way the flipper ends or turn it down and see which the way the flipper ends and then just remember it right and then when you set one side you know set the other side in the same increment up or down you know that you did on on the on the left side but and it's orientation that needs to be done on the other side so if you did the left side up you know five increments the right side should probably be down five increments right and just so that your flipper angles always end up the same on both sides um and and i suggest doing both of them at the same time i don't suggest doing um not both at the same time because obviously you can't with the numbering scheme but i'm saying you know set one side and go and set the other side test it Go back, you know, make adjustments on both sides, test it until you get it the way you want. I don't recommend doing the left side six times before you say that's the way it should be. And then you got to sit there and try and remember, uh, you know, how many times, what, how much uh, did I increment or dec decrement, decrement um, that flipper to get it where it's at? Because you could drive yourself crazy doing that. I mean, I've sat here and learned my hardships and and you know made my changes a certain way so that i could keep track of them um 
And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you if you really blow up the table, you could always just re-download it. All right. It's not the end of the world, but uh, by the way, let's take a look at the new South Park one. The the graphics are much 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 nicer. I don't know if you, if you guys can get a clear visual of that because I'm using some open source recording software, but very nice table. Um, this one's on VP Universe. You will not find this for some reason on uh, VP forums. I don't know why, but VP Universe, get this one if you're looking for a South Park. All right, guys, I'm going to call it a night. It's been a long night. Dachshund's passed out. Hope you learned a lot. Um, the next video will probably may I don't know if I'm going to do it on, I don't know if I'm just going to continue with the physics for FizzMod and, and uh, Visual Pinball 10, which is in beta. I'm still kind of working on getting those physics to feel right. I, I feel like no matter what I do to it, it doesn't kind of play the way I expect it to. I'm getting closer, but... Um, it still needs a lot of work. I've been ignoring FizzMod and Visual Pinball 10 just because I feel like I'm playing with two betas and trying to make them production. I, you know, that's how I feel. Um, and I feel like I don't know if I'm wrapping my head against the wall with something that they're going to update with code later on and I spend, you know, three weeks working on that or do I put my time into something else and wait for them to pretty much say that the physics are done. So I may go through it um, and, and try and get an idea, give you guys an idea of how the physics work because they're a lot different than what we just went through. Um, also in the works, I have something interesting, which is I, uh, I installed... Uh, a Windows version of Perl, and I've been writing a script that is going to attempt to automate all my build uh, tedious work. So the the script is going to basically. Right now, my logic plan is that I dump my ROM and my table and my visual pin, my front end uh, graphics and my backlash all into one folder for as many tables as I download. And that this script will move, rename some of those files to the way I want them to be named, and then uh, move those files into the, to the directories that they need to be in, and then go and update the XML for Pinball X to add it into the correct um, uh, the correct uh, category database so that I don't have to do anything else other than point click and download right and then at the end of uh, downloading all this stuff I just gotta run this script and by the time I could count the less than 30 seconds it'll probably be done and you know 10 15 tables with all of their associated files have been uh, installed and moved and basically I'm going to distribute that out um, through some kind of link on 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 YouTube so that you guys can download uh, with some in instructionals on how to get this stuff to work um, but like I said it, it, I have been having problems uh, getting some time to sit down and write code for this because I'm writing code at work for other stuff and I'm not a coding person to begin with but I can do it um, so I did I did a little work this weekend on it after I came out of um, some wisdom teeth surgery uh, and then I kind of got caught up with cat getting caught up with everything else that's been going on around here so I'm thinking that maybe this weekend I'll get some more time to, to hammer away at it it's about I would say 20% done. So, you know, if you're interested in that, subscribe, you know, keep looking for the videos. In the meantime, I'll try and release other videos until I can get that thing uh, done. All right, guys. So that's what's in the works. I'll see you next time.